Your reputation is what men think or believe about you. But your character is who you are. So while men may be impressed with your reputation, God always looks out for your character. And that is what determines whether he is impressed with you or not. In his letter to the church in Sardis, in Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, Jesus begins by saying that this church has a reputation with men that it is alive. But as far as he is concerned, that is he, the one that knows the truth, this church is dead. Let me ask you this question. Does your reputation before men align with the character that God sees in you? If the two align, then you are in a very good place. But if they are not in alignment, what you are living is the life of a hypocrite. Because God can never be impressed with your reputation among men if the character that he is seeing concerning you is not consistent with it. Jesus shows us this in Mark chapter 11 when he saw the fig tree that had leaves all over it and he was giving the people the impression that it was fruitful. But when Jesus got to it, looking out for fruits and did not find it, he was not impressed and he pronounced judgment upon that tree. If Jesus comes into your life right now to examine you, will he see that your reputation among men is consistent with the truth that he will find about you. This church appears to all men to be alive, but in the true sense of things, it was a dead church. The question then arises, what are the characteristics of a dead church? In basic biology, there are eight main characteristics of a living thing. And that is what we are going to be looking at so that we'll be able to identify what is happening in a living church. And that will help us know whether our church or even we as individuals are living dead. The first is movement. The Bible introduces God to us in Genesis chapter 3 as a walking God. The Bible says that he walks in the cool of the evening in the garden. The Bible also describes people who are doing what God wants in their lives as people walking with God. As the Bible said concerning Enoch, that Enoch walked with God and God took him. I'm asking you, are you on the move with God? Are you walking with him? The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sensory perceptions. Can God look at you and say you are really on the move and you are walking with him? Or your life is just staying in one place, doing as if there is no work to engage in or to embark upon with God. The second is reproduction. Can God look at your life and see that you are producing fruits that are consistent with divine expectations? Jesus tells us clearly in many of his parables that God wants us to be fruitful. In fact, the proof of our faithfulness is the fruit that we bring forth. So I'm asking you, are you producing fruits that we see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22? Because those are the testimonies of whether or not you are reproducing and bringing forth fruits that are worthy of the repentance that you claim that you have done in the course of your work with God. The third is nutrition. Do you desire the milk of the word? Are you feeding on the word of God constantly? One of the signs that somebody is sick is a loss of appetite. In fact, there is no dead being that eats. That's why you need to ask yourself, are you still longing for the word of God? If you have lost appetite for the word of God, it could be a clear, clear indication that you're actually moving towards death. The fourth is irritability. Are you able to respond 
to the sense of the Spirit? Are you able to respond to the stimulus of the Spirit? Jesus says in the book of John chapter 10, says, my sheep hear my voice, which means his sheep has the ability to perceive his voice. Are you still able to hear the voice of God? When the Holy Spirit rebukes you, are you still able to pick it? Or you are totally governed by your flesh? The fifth is growth. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child and I acted like a child. But when I grew up, when I became a man, I let go of childish things. I'm asking you, are you letting go of childish things or you are still holding on to them? The Bible says that we should not be as children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Are you established in the truth or you are still being swept left and right, carried to and fro by every wind of doctrine? That is how you will know whether you are growing or not. The sixth is excretion. When you come in contact with the Word of God, do you let go of those things that the Word of God tells you that you should get rid of? Do you remove them from your life? When the Word of God shows you from the mirror of His Word that the things that you are doing are not consistent with His expectations of your life, do you remove those things from your life. That is how you know whether you are alive. If you excrete things that are not consistent with divine expectations. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, Seeing therefore that we are surrendered with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily besets us. Are you laying aside the weight and the sin that is easily besetting you? That is a clear indication of you still being alive. The seventh is respiration. Respiration is the way we breathe in and breathe out. As you are receiving the life of God, do you give it out unto others? You are saved, yes. But are you giving out the word of life unto others? Are you involved in personal ministry? communicating the life of God unto others. Or all you do is sit down and receive. Remember, one major characteristic of the Dead Sea is that it only receives, it doesn't give out. So if you are just receiving the word and you are not actively serving God or giving out the word of life to bring people into God's kingdom, then you are walking in the realm of the dead and you need to make necessary adjustments. The eighth and the final one is death. The Bible says that how can we who are alive in God still continue in sin? It says we that are dead unto sin, how can we continue to live therein? He also says in Romans chapter 8, it says if we through the spirit mortify or put to death the deeds of the flesh, it says then we shall live. God wants us to constantly put to death even the works and the deeds of the flesh in our lives so that we can continue to manifest the life of God in us. These were the things that were lacking in the church in Sardis. And I want you to do a cross-examination of yourself. See whether these things, these characteristics of a living thing are still operational in your life, especially in your spiritual life so that you can make necessary adjustments. Jesus tells the church to do three things. He said, first of all, that they should look back to where they are coming from. Go back to those basic things that you learned, those things that you used to do when you just gave your life to Christ, your hunger for the word of God, your constant desire for fellowship with the saints. If you have lost appetite for those things, get them back. Also, check where you are and those things that have not completely died, strengthen them. Jesus says that they should check the things that remain and strengthen them so that those things would not die. And lastly, he told them to look forward and begin to expect his coming back. 
Do you still look forward to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? If you are, then you will constantly stay awake and alive. And then you will not be caught like a thief in the night when Jesus comes to execute judgment upon the earth and redeem his saints. I hope you ponder on this because Jesus has a reward for all those who do not stain their garments in the corruption of this world. If you will stand by him and not be impressed only by the reputation of men concerning you, or be carried away by the things that men say concerning you, then you'll be able to check yourself and do what is necessary to reign with the master by the time he'll be coming back. I hope you will take thought on this. And as you do so, I pray that God will multiply grace upon your life. He will open your eyes to see those things that you need to adjust and those that you need to strengthen that are still remaining so that by the time he comes, you will be able to reign eternally in life with him. God bless you and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.